it turns out that the issue of inflation was addressed directly by the chief financial officer of Visa, I hope I pronounce his name correctly, Vasant Prabhu. On January 27th earnings call, he has asked how inflation impacts Visa. His answer, and I quote, net-net, I mean, we are a beneficiary of inflation. He also said, quote, to the extent that there's inflation driving up ticket size, clearly it's beneficial to us. So let's put to rest the theory that this has nothing to do with inflation. It appears to have some relevance. Can I ask you, Mr. Sheedy, incidentally, uh, Ms. Corrette told us that coincidentally, April 22nd was chosen by both Visa and MasterCard as the day to raise the fees. Was that just a coincidence or coordination? Can you turn on your feet? Turn on your mic, please. Thank you. Apologize. Senator, we did not raise the fees in April. In fact, 90% of businesses in the United States see uh, a change in their rates that were down by 10% effective with the April changes. Ms. Correct, were you wrong? Uh, no, we calculated, we got a 300 page amendment or a fee schedule. We calculated exactly the fee increases for us. And while some fees went down, others went up significantly. The net effect is our fees went up. Both companies the same day? Yes. Mr. Sheedy, here's a customer who has some evidence otherwise. May I ask you, Ms. Kirkpatrick, you're in charge of MasterCard North America. I want to ask you about these crazy Canadians. How in the world can you explain this? In Canada, there's a debit card system called Interact. It is most, the most widely used debit card system in Canada. It reports it has one of the lowest rates of fraud globally. The website for Interact says, and I quote, Interchange for Interact Debit is currently set at zero. How is it possible these crazy Canadians are getting no charge of inter fees, uh, interchange fees on debits and have less fraud? How can that possibly be? Well, Senator, it's not the case that uh, Canadian merchants uh, don't have interchange fees. There's value. In the debit cards. There is value in the debit space that consumers derive from uh, transacting at merchants, and there's value that the merchants What do you mean by receive. value? You're going to have to define terms. When merchants shop at a Canadian, uh, when consumers shop at Canadian merchants, they receive value through the form of guaranteed payment, lower risk, uh, purchasing power. And so therefore, there are interchange fees on debit transactions in Canada, and it's a direct result of the, the value that those merchants are delivering and that consumers are deriving. Mr. Mrzwinski noted what's happening in Europe, so let's go, let's stick with the program for a minute. Try to explain to me the difference in debit and credit card interchange fees in the Europe, where the European Union has set a standard of 0.2% and 0.3% respectively, one-eighth or one-tenth of which is charged in the United States. Uh, clearly, their system is much different than ours, and we have no regulation. Other countries like Australia, Brazil, China, India, Israel, Malaysia, and South Korea also limit interchange fees. So what lessons can we learn from all of these countries who have decided that interchange fees are way too high in the United States? Well, I think those, comp those countries know that the credit card system is a market failure, and the ways that the banks are forced to uh, accept all of the fees from the networks and the, the consumers are forced to pay increased prices, they're not going to have it. They're not going to have it, and they said no. And U.S. Uh, Congress should strengthen the Durban Amendment, expand it to credit cards, uh, and um, lower interchange across the board. Make sure I understand the scope of interchange fees. If I decided that I wanted to give money to Catholic charities for the people, Ukrainian refugees in Poland, and I use my credit card or debit card to make that donation, would you be collecting an interchange fee on that transaction, Ms. Kirkpatrick? The interchange fees for um, MasterCard uh, does have interchange fees, uh, where the banks do charge interchange fees to consumers, uh, or s rather to merchants, across all transactions for the benefit that the consumers are receiving from that transaction. So there's a cost associated with servicing that transaction and servicing that account. 
And the interchange fees also apply to sales tax I'm paying on my restaurant bill? It does. Why? It's the, again, it's the total value that the consumers are deriving when they shop at a merchant. A tax on a tax. It's the total value. So you can't just look at interchange as one More than a total value. As one element. You're looking at the total cost of servicing that account, which includes fraud, guaranteed payment, increased purchasing power, and the ability to use that product anywhere MasterCard is accepted. And we look at it across the world where interchange fees are regulated and restrained, and we don't see this rampant fraud. Senator Wesley? Yeah. 